First of all, external ear is divided into three parts for description the auricle, the external auditory meatus, and the tympanic membrane. First of all, auricle, general features of the auricle it is, it is made up of a single plate of cartilage covered on both sides by the skin, but the lowermost part of the auricle, that is the lobule, has doesn't have, have cartilage but has fibro fatty tissue covered by skin. This is this is a soft part called lobule. Other features are this is the antitragus, antihelix, which divides into two at its upper part to enclose the triangular fossa. Then this depressed area is the concha. This is the helix. At the upper margin, a deep area to the helix. This is the scaphoid fossa. And on the helix, we have a tubercle called the auricular tubercle of Darwin. Tragus is not shown here. And then we have this. Simba Simba Conchi Simba Conca Simba Conca this region and this is Conca uh, okay the arterial supply of this auricle is from the superficial temporal artery and from the posterior auricular artery veins drain into the corresponding veins while the nerve supply for the nerve supply we divide this auricle into two surfaces the lateral and the medial surface the upper two third of the lateral surface is supplied by the auricular temporal nerve while the lower one third is supplied by the great auricular nerve on the medial side, the upper two-third is supplied by the lesser occipital nerve and the lower one-third by the same great auricular nerve. Then we have the external acoustic meatus. It is an S-shaped canal. The out, it is totally 24 mm in length. The outer one-third, that is 8 mm, is cartilaginous. Here we can see the cartilage, while the inner two-third is bony, that is 16 mm. This S-shaped canal, it is divided into three parts. The first part is directed upwards, forwards and medially. The second part is directed upwards, backwards and medially. And the third part is directed downwards, forwards and medially. Then it is lined by the skin which is adherent to the periosteum. The skin contains sebaceous glands, sweat glands and some special glands called seruminous glands which secrete the cerumen or ear wax which is for uh, to kill the bacteria to kill the bacteria for protection then the arterial supply of this uh, external acoustic meatus is from the same superficial temp uh, and from the posterior artery. auricular artery superficial temporal and the posterior auricular artery and the inner, and the inner part by the deep auricular artery of the uh, that is that is Deep. derived from the maxillary artery, a branch of the maxillary artery. Then the nerve supply, the posterior part of the auricle is supplied by the deep auricular branch of vagus nerve, the posterior wall. This deep auricular branch of vagus nerve also supplies the root of the auricle, this concha region. While the anterior wall of the auricle is supplied by the auricular temporal nerve. Lymphatics of the auricle and of the external acoustic matters drain into the pre-auricular, post-auricular and the superficial cervical <coughs> lymph nodes. So. Then we have this tympanic membrane. It is 8 by 9 by 10 mm in its area is 9 by 10 mm. It is placed obliquely at the end of the external acoustic meatus. Its angle with the floor of the external acoustic meatus is 55 degrees. Its outer aspect is concave while the inner aspect is convex. The point of maximum convexity is called umbo. Its margin is body. greatly thickened. Through its margin it is attached to the tympanic sulcus. On the, the on the temp uh, on the uh, this uh, what is this bone? Temporal bone. Temporal so temporal really bone. the tympanic sulcus is deficient. deficient to form the tympanic notch and from the anterior and posterior ends of tympanic notch arise two folds. These are called anterior and posterior malleolar folds and these are attached to the lateral process of the malleus. Between these anterior and posterior malleolar folds the so tympanic membrane flaccida. is flaccid that is called pars flaccida while the rest of the membrane is tense that is called pars tensor. Membrane branch. is kept tense by this muscle that is called tense. the tensor tympani muscle. Which is attached to? Mem uh, which is attached to the handle of the malleus. And then we uh, have the uh, water tympani branch passes through the flaccid medial to the pars flaccida. Then there are the tympanic membrane is made up of three layers. The outermost is the cuticular layer or skin, and the middle is the fibrous layer. The fibrous layer consists of dense collagenous fibers in the pars tensor region, but in the pars flaccida, the collagen fibers are replaced by the loose areolar tissue. 
the innermost is a mucous layer which is lined by ciliated pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium pseudo stratified not it is pseudo stratified or what it is low ciliated columnar epithelium the mucous layer in, then we have the blood supply blood supply is different on the outer and inner surfaces on the outer surface it is supplied by the superficial temporal artery no by the deep auricular branch of the maxillary artery and on the inner surface it is supplied by anterior and posterior tympanic arteries the anterior tympanic artery is branch of maxillary artery while the posterior tympanic artery is branch of the stylomastoid branch of the posterior auricular artery then we have its nerve supply it's uh, on inner aspect it is supplied by the tympanic plexus formed by the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve while its outer aspect is supplied by the nerve let me check <coughs> auricular temporal nerve simple and the auricular branch of vagus nerve and on inner aspect it is supplied by tympanic branch of the no 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 close yeah, and the tympanic membrane or the eardrum is placed obliquely, make an ang angle of 55 degree with the external acoustic nature. Its direction is downwards, forwards and lateral direction of tympanic membrane. Therefore, the floor of the external acoustic meters is longer than the roof and the anterior wall is longer than the posterior wall. And then the narrowest point of the external acoustic matrix is isthmus, which is located at 5 mm this region from the tympanic membrane, while the widest part are the outermost vertical diameter, the lateralmost vertical part, and the innermost anterior posterior. These are the widest parts of the external acoustic meters. Okay, uh, lateral and medial walls are approximated to each other so that the cavity has a narrow, is narrow in the center. And anterior and posterior walls are vert vertically greater in length but uh, the width is, width is uh, quite less. Then the, in coronal sections if you examine the cavity we have a biconcave chamber. Its lateral and medial walls approximate each other in the center so that the width of the cavity is just 2 mm in the center. Near the roof its width is 6 mm and near the floor its width is 4 mm. It has six walls, anterior, posterior, medial, lateral, roof and floor. First of all the mm, roof. Formed by a thin plate of bone called the tegment tympani, not shown here. That is a part of the squamous temporal bone. The tegment tympani also gives a projection to the lateral wall forming the petrotympanic fissure. Tegment tympani communicates above with the meninges and infection from this ear may spread to the meninges in the middle ear cavity through this tegment tympani through this thin plate of bone. Normally in infants there is petrosquamous fissure through which middle ear can communicate with the uh, middle uh, cranial fossa but in adults that is ossified. Now, floor is formed by the jugular fossa and near the medial wall the floor has a foramen that is called tympanic canaliculus through which tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve is transmitted. Anterior wall has two openings in its upper part, the opening for the canal for tensor tympani and the opening for the auditory tube. Both the canals are separated by, by this septum and this septum pro, uh, this continues forward on the medial wall in the form of processus cochlearis formus here. And this processus cochlearis formus at its terminal end forms a pulley through which the tendon of tensor tympani gets turned toward the handle of malleus to get attached to it. Below, the anterior wall is formed by the posterior part of the carotid canal. Anterior wall is also called carotid wall. So roof is also called tegmental wall. Floor is called jugular wall. Now, lateral part is called the tympanic wall and it is formed by the squamous temporal bone in upper part and the tympanic membrane, tympanic sulcus and tympanic notch in the lower part. Lateral wall may or kya part Lateral wall mein? Bas yeh yaan. Sabres the middle ear from the external acoustic meters. From the external acoustic meters. Anterior canal equals the petrotympanic fissure lies in front of the upper end of the bony rim. Lateral wall mein petrotympanic fissure hai which transmits the this caudal tympani nerve to the base of the skull and also the anterior tympanic artery from the maxillary artery and it also lodges the anterior ligament of malleus. 
جدا 